I'm at Super Judge and praise God. Today is Friday. Praise God. And I've told you before, every Friday. Why I'm, so, why I'm so excited about Fridays is this. You take the weekend. Listen to this message from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Listen. Listen. Don't just listen once. Listen to learn. Listen so that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. That's why these things are recorded and given out. Take advantage of it. Learn, grow, and live the word of God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just love you, Lord. We just love you. Thank you for the free gift of your spirit, of your wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call forth and make demand for our daily bread. Praise God. Are you ready? Anytime I say this. Now, you see, as a child of God, you must expect a miracle every day. Every day. David knew it, so he says he daily loads us with bare feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Jesus said, Pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh huh. So, what are you talking about? It's recorded. We have benefits to receive every day. Is God unfaithful not to give it? Of course, you know He's a faithful God. Are you available to receive it? See, that's where the problem is. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father. I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So, Mark, 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 chapter 16. Oh, hallelujah. Mark, chapter 16. And... From verse 15 again. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Take note of that. Every creature. He's sending the 11 now. Because he was with the 11. If you read from verse 14, you'll see that. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know something amazing. Now, when you read verse 14, let me read from verse 14. It says, Later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now these same folks that he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, they are the same people he now gave these instructions. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What does that tell you? Jesus doesn't give up on you that easily. (laughs) He doesn't. Now you want to think like, these guys, can I trust them to to take this gospel out. Can I can I trust them? Yeah, that's what that's what a normal human being would think. But thank God Jesus isn't normal. Praise <laughs> God. He wasn't a normal person, you know that now. So he he still had faith in these folks, despite the fact that they have displayed so much unbelief and shown hardness of heart. See that. So now he gave them this instruction, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. We've talked about this. This baptism is Holy, Holy Ghost baptism. And then verse 17, say, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. Now I dwelt a lot talking about casting out devils. This is one thing, see, every believer, every believer, you must cast out devils. I'm not saying go look for devils to cast out. You don't have to look for devils to cast out. They they are ever before your face. They are always there, but you don't realize it. I remember, I stressed, first cast the one that is speaking to you. That's the one that is right, trying to deviate you, trying to tempt you. That's the one you start for. 
before you start showing power to go to someone else you know where, where you see a demon spirit operating now there are times you walk into a place and you just sense that there's a there's a wrong spirit in this place you see as god's children you must learn to take charge of every environment you find yourself this is one thing you must learn as a child of god take charge of every environment that you find yourself you see grow to that point where nothing happens around you that you will not be first aware of nothing and and that happens not because you pray for 10 hours that happens because you're concerned about it now i say because you're concerned you will pray you see that now and that is is better when you pray with the right concern because now since you're praying you're open for the holy spirit to communicate truth to you concerning that thing because there are those who pray they pray for 10 hours but their heart is hardened see they've they've hardened their heart on what they want to do and so they are praying to generate power to do that thing now that's dangerous that's dangerous because that can lead you to death when you come before the lord and begin to pray the first thing that must happen is is like 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 he told us in Haggai, right break up your fallow ground or habakkuk break out break up your fallow ground break it up you see, the moment you come to the place of prayer, no matter what you think, sometimes, you know, someone has hurt you so bad, and then you say, ah, I will deal with you in my place of prayer this night. This night, I will deal with you. And you go, Father, oh! And then you still carry all that hurt, all that anger before the Lord. And the Father, he, tonight, you will visit him. Oh God, you will destroy him. Father, you will kill him. Hey, I, I release death to him. How, how can you pray like that? You're, you're not praying. You're practicing witchcraft. Oh, yes. That's exactly what you're doing. You're practicing witchcraft because your prayer now is based on the flesh. See, the first thing you do when you come before the Lord, and that's why one of the benefits of, of being a, a believer Jesus said it. He said one of the things we will do is that we will speak in with new tongues. Now, what does tongues help us do? See, it's one easy way to break up your grounds, your heart. So you come before the Lord. No matter what is in your heart, no matter how hurt, how bitter you feel, you come before the Lord and then you, you, you begin to break it. You begin, that's the first thing you do. So you begin to play like Kamananga Bronos, Zokra Ida Azoke Labranda Kila Brodos. Now, you don't want to see things from your own perspective. You want to see things from God's perspective. So you begin to pray like Kunanda Brodos, Lekola Azgabarna. Oh, Zopraka. Ah, Lord, this person really, really hurts me. But Lord, Holy Spirit, I, I seek your wisdom. I seek your wisdom. Now soon, you, you would notice that the hearts begin to leave your heart. Because now you are testifying, you are confessing that you depend on him. You see that now? That's what you're confessing, that you depend on him. And then you are bypassing your mind. That's what praying in the Holy Ghost does to us. You're bypassing your mind. Your mind is full of hurt. Your mind is full of all that hate and bitterness. But then you're not just bypassing your mind. Ah, Nakina as Kamalia. You're not just bypassing your mind to do something evil. No. You, you, you see, your, your, your mind has become a problem to you right now. Yes, because of the memory, the hurt. The hatred, the bitterness is all there. So now you begin to pray in the spirit. You're praying in the spirit. Now guess what? The Holy Spirit who watches over your soul. Ah, yeah. 
You know, you know, when, when the Bible says he's able to save us to the uttermost, you don't understand what he meant by that. People think, that's what they used to interpret, that you cannot lose your salvation. What they don't realize is it's a walking thing. So now I'm about to lose my soul. It's even, it's even silly for someone to think that you cannot lose your salvation. Who, who told you that? Anyone who told you that I've deceived you. Yes, it has deceived you. He has deceived you. Is God's salvation perfect? Yes, it is perfect. But well, you can change your mind. Oh, yes, you can change your mind. You can decide to start misbehaving today. It's all in your will. It's in your will. You can decide to do anything you like to do today. So, oh, no, because I'm saved. It doesn't matter whatever I do. God will still save me. Don't deceive yourself. Paul clearly stated it. For those of you that follow Paul's doctrines, Paul st stated it. No fornicator, no... He, he, he spoke about... He says, they will not see the kingdom of heaven. They say, because I'm born again, I can go and fornicate, I can go and do all those things. And uh, You see, the Holy Spirit's job is to save your soul. And that saving of your soul is a continuous process. Is a continuous process. What do you mean a continuous process? There is a tendency for your soul to go wrong. But the job of the Holy Spirit is to arrest it right there and keep it where it ought to be. That is the salvation, the saving of our souls. So someone hurts me and I'm angry. And in anger, I might take a decision that will cost something. And now I go before the Lord. I'm like, come and the brother, kasu, reiku meni, come and the brother, kudu sileke, da bradiga, diya kata, ero krupe. Now you can start from the place of, yo, ayakaba, matayat, oh, father, you must intervene on this. Erakaya. He will not talk to you. He will leave you. See, I, I said, this thing is, is something we practice. You know, it's something we read and then we try to formalize it. It's something you practice. If you've never experienced these things, you won't understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, Allah, good day, Kadu, Makata, Yakata. And you know you begin to lose strength. Yeah, you should be able to observe when you pray that you're losing strength. You should know that you, if you've prayed for 30 minutes and you're not getting an inflow in the realm of the spirit, you should know that something is wrong and change gear change gear if you're busy praying for 30 minutes that god should deal with somebody and no word has come about the god dealing with that person but be careful that you don't start hearing the devil speak to you <laughs> praise god yeah no no the devil won't tell you i will deal with you no he won't he will speak like that because he can't he can't take the place of god rather the devil will be suggesting things to your mind why don't you take that bottle and go and hit his head uh -huh, that's the devil speaking to you now the holy spirit will never tell you such a thing See that now? Are there wicked people in the world? Yes, there are wicked people in the world. But even in dealing with the wickedness, God is still interested in saving your own soul. Vengeance belongs to him. He will take care of it. He will not take it with you. Nah, he will not take Don't think because you're angry, God too will be angry. He doesn't see like you. And also remember, he could be the one that instigated that thing. <laughs> oh, you don't understand God. Praise God. You, you don't understand Him. He could be the one that instigated it. To see how you react. Because as He saves our soul, He tests us. Remember, I was telling you yesterday. No, no, I was telling you on Wednesday. That Jesus, when He was fasting for 40 days, God taught Him some things. And everything God taught Him about was what Satan came to tempt him with you see that so god will teach you about anger god will teach you about patience and self-control and he finished teaching you the following week someone will hit you hard i remember the beginning of this year i was just praying and, and, and asking the lord 
what's the year going to be like, Lord? What, what am I, what, what's your instruction for me this year? And one thing that the Lord sounded in my ears, he said, this year, be sober. Right? Okay. Okay. I should be sober. Okay. All right. I should be sober. Okay. Lord, what do you mean be sober? Because I've learned working with him. Don't assume you know. If he tells you a word that you think you know, that's the more reason you should humble yourself and ask him, Lord, I know, I know this thing. Now, but what's your thoughts concerning this? Why are you telling me this now? And then the Lord began to speak to me about emotional soberness, financial soberness, and um, spiritual soberness. Uh, oh. Okay, now, he told me from the beginning of the year, and boy, the things I have seen this year, <laughs> God. you know you look back and like whoa thank God for his warning because there are things that we faced or that I faced that you just think the right thing to do is to act like this but then you remember the word of the Lord be sober ah, <laughs> I see now so you are just quiet and calm and watching. <laughs> now that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. See, his job is to save your soul. And that's what he is doing. He is still doing it till this day. Oh, some of you have gotten angry and cut off relationships. Why? No, you, you, you don't know what that person did to me. Hey, and then I see the whole aggression in your heart. It's not the person. You are the one that has a problem right now. Your soul needs to be saved. Oh, you don't know this. What is the truth? Someone lied against you. Someone cheated you. Someone betrayed you. And now, hey, see how you are reacting to the whole situation. Number one is this, you are displaying that you don't even believe in the Lord, who is the judge of all things. If you believe he's the judge of all things, you'll be calm and let him judge. But you know what? Let it go. Let it go. You're not saying let it go because you're a fool. You're saying let it go because number one, you are conscious of his saving your soul. And he's not told you to react See, because you're, you're, you're conscious to only react the way he wants you to react. And times like that, he will give you wisdom. He will tell you, oh, now this is how I want you, this is how I want you to treat this person from now. Or this is how I want you to handle this one. Is that the Lord for you? Praise God. That's how the Lord. So he is in the business of saving your soul. He didn't finish saving your soul the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ. The salvation of your soul is a continuous process. Is a continuous process. And let me tell you the truth. And any time you choose to disobey him, you'll suffer for it. Just like I was telling you about Apostle Paul yesterday. He chose to disobey the Lord. So, you see, in essence, most of the epistles we read were written from the place of disobedience. <laughs> Think about that. You see that now? Apostle Paul was sincere. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the epistles are wrong. I'm just letting you understand that there are things we learn from all these people. So we learn from Apostle Paul. Imagine going to Jerusalem. Go read it. From the day he stepped into Jerusalem, he went to greet the apostles. By the way, it was the apostles in Jerusalem that bound him, bound his hands and legs. They were the ones that bound him with religious tradition. And that's exactly what made them deliver him to the Gentiles. It wasn't the, 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 the bad Jews. It was the apostles, James and the rest of them, that bound him. He didn't realize when they were bound him. That's another 
But from that day, imagine going, believing that you're supposed to go somewhere, you go there, the next day they arrest you, and from the day they arrest you, you spend years in prison. You can't preach to anybody. So you begin to write. He could have used all those years to be establishing the kingdom. Maybe God would have even sent him to Africa by then. Praise God. You understand what I'm talking about? So let's submit our hearts to the Lord. Let's submit our hearts to the Lord. Be attentive. When you're about to make a mistake, you will hear a voice. There will be a correction around you. But the ability to listen and obey is in your hands. Yield to him that he will save your soul completely. He says he's able to save to the uttermost if you yield to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you. Lord, our hearts are yielded to you. And peradventure, there is anyone listening to me right now that has gone far away from your instructions, from your command. Today, I ask that mercy will speak on their behalf. And that, Lord, I pray that you will send your word to them to bring them back in line, that their souls may be saved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a man, you've left your family, you've left your wife and, and children. I, I, I see you leaving the house. And that's been on for more than a year now. But I see you still hardening your heart towards it. But let me tell you this truth. It may not sound nice, but here is the truth. Your life, Satan is after your life. You are thinking your wife is your problem, but she is not. Satan is after your life. And you know in your heart, and that's why you've not been able to pray about it. Deliberately, you've refused to pray about it. You just keep telling yourself, we keep moving. And the more you move every day, days have turned to weeks, and weeks have turned to months. But I hear the Lord say to you, He will open one door of mercy for you. He will open one door of mercy for you. Repent and go back to your family. Repent. Repent from your heart. And go back to your family. Pull them in. For I see there's something the Lord wants to do with your life. That Satan is fighting. And you're opening the door for him. But may the Lord help you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.